um, learners, uh, welcome to this episode of uh, Cambridge IGCS Geography Alternative to Coursework. So in today's class, uh, we're going to learn about how to measure river width and also river depth. So we're still under the series of river measurement. So there are certain keywords I need us to understand when it comes to the depth and um, width of a river and the velocity. What does it actually mean? Now, the velocity has to do with the speed of flow. That's the direction the water takes as it moves, how fast the water moves uh, across its channel. Why the depth is how deep the river is across the channel and the width is the distance between two banks of the, the two banks of the river. That's the width of the river. So when we want to measure the width, measure the width, what we what we'll be doing is to simply describe how we can measure the distance between the two banks of a river. And when we want to measure the depth is how to measure how deep the river is. So quickly you see, um, methods to measure uh, channel width. That's, you know, a river usually have two banks, and this is bank A, and this is bank B. So uh, how do we measure the length of these two banks? Now, um, first, we have one student, uh, we stand at each bank, or you put poles, in this case, remember your poles, your ranging poles, will be better, at the two banks, and side by side each other. It should be directly side by side each other, so you can actually have a pole here, and also a pole here. That's the second option, or you can have um, two students at individual bank. Now, the second step is you place a measuring tape across the channel, just like this. Uh, a measuring tape across the channel from one bank to the other. So you should have a measuring tape measuring from one bank to the other. Then you keep the tape stretched and take your what? Reading. So you keep it stretched and then you take your reading. Then what you do is you repeat at different sites and you calculate the average. What this signifies. If this is the river, this is the river, yeah. And these are the two banks. So we have bank A, bank B, bank. So what you can do is this can be our site one. So we can have another one, A, B, across the channel. I will call this site two. We can have another one, A, B, across the channel. And we can call this site three. So what this means is uh, you should be able to take the reading for site one, site two, and site three, then you now calculate, you now calculate the average to get your reading. So you record your measurement at each site. So if let's say this site we have uh, three meters, this site four meters, this site two meters, then when you want to calculate the width of this river channel, now you can be three, plus four plus two, which will be seven, nine, nine divided by three, because you are looking at three sides, which will give you three. That's the average width of this river. So it's, it's that simple, how you measure the channel width. So remember this, because it comes out a lot also in your IG exams. Now, how you measure the depth of a river? The depth of a river. Now, uh, the first thing you do is, you rest the ruler, rod on the riverbed, then the ruler slash rod should be vertically into the riverbed, then you measure where the water level is, so the, or the wet part of the ruler. Now you measure at equal point across the width of that river. So if, <coughs> across, sorry, across the, yeah. So if we have, let's say this, 
we want to measure the depth of this river across this point let's say a and this is b the first thing we do is you get a rod or you get a ruler and let's say this is the water level so this is the bank this is the water level and we want to measure the weight so the first thing is you rest the ruler inside so we can you can have different point across the um, banks uh, so here i can put the ruler here then i'll take my reading the wet point of the rod here then i go to the next side put my ruler here take the reading put my ruler here take another reading put my ruler here take the wet point where the water touches the Put my ruler here, take the reading, put my ruler here, take the reading, and at equal points. What that means is the distance between this to this should be equal. The distance between this to this should be equal. The distance between this point to this point should be equal as you move across to measure the depth of the river. So so the step is simple you rest a raw a ruler or a rod at the bed remember this is the river bed so as you place it it should be vertical and you measure where the water level or the wet part of a ruler so you just measure this part then you measure at equal distance so, so simple that's just how you do it so you find that that there are questions where they will ask you why does the width and depth of a river increases downstream? Why does the width and depth of a river increases downstream? Now, remember, when we want to look at upstream, if you have your upstream and we have our downstream here, One major thing that happens is the river usually flows from upstream to downstream. And as it moves, there are changes in its characteristics. So you find out that here it will be more shallow, then it gets larger as it moves down. Then you can even have distributaries, this point. Now, it's not just that um, you can have different features at both the upper so if this is the case remember this might be not even my this is the upper this is the middle and this will be the lower course so if this is the upper this is the middle and this is the lower course of this river so what you will now know is there is an increased discharge so why does the depth and width of a river increases as it moves downstream? What this means is, why is it that the river, because if we have to draw the cross section. Now, let's say we draw the cross section from A to B across this line. What you get is, this is the, remember this is what, the depth. And this, from this point to this point, is the width so what we're we looking at why is it that as we move down the width increases as we draw the cross section it increases so if I find out that, that if this happens in the upper sorry the upper should not have a u-shape then at the middle it should be why is it that it will be deeper and wider and at the lower why is it that it will be so what are the features that causes this? That is what this question is all about. So first, there is an increased discharge volume of flow from upstream to downstream. So you find out that the volume of flow here increases. And if the volume of flow increases, uh, you expect that, okay, let me just follow it in steps. First, there is increased discharge and volume of flow from the upper course as it moves downwards. And usually as it moves, there are tributaries that are being added to it. 
more tributaries being added, tributaries being added to this river, to, to the main river course. Now, tributaries are smaller rivers that flows into larger rivers. So you have tributaries. So as the tributaries are added, then you expect that the volume of water within the major river course increases. So the banks of the river get eroded. Now, how are they eroded? They are eroded through uh, the erosional processes, which can be <coughs> hydraulic action and the force of moving water. It can also be through abrasion process, through corrosion, corrosion or through attrition. So these are the erosional processes. So what that means is, uh, due to the water volume increases as it moves downstream, smaller rivers are added to it, so the volume gets larger. So the beds, the beds, this is the bed of a river, and this is the bank of a river. So once the bed gets eroded, then you expect that the river gets deeper as the bed gets eroded. And the reason why it gets eroded is through these erosional processes. So as it's eroded, the bed gets deeper, and as the bank gets eroded too, it gets wider. It gets wider to increase the load of the river. So that's it. So the bedrock may be weaker, so it's easy. Uh, it increases the rate of erosion. So it also depends on the type of rocks uh, that are found within this river course. Uh, so if it is weaker, there will be an increased rate of erosion. Now, you have specific human interference with uh, river channels. So humans can actually interfere uh, through dredging and also method to prevent flooding across this channel, and that will also affect the width and depth of a river. So um, thank you for this section. In the next class, we're going to be looking at how to measure the river velocity. If you, if you need me to do any topic in geography, uh, please, you can actually just signify in the comment section. Thank you.